On this episode of Best Horror Movie You Never Saw, we take a look back at the politically charged 1981 horror comedy satire, The People Under the Stairs, written and directed by the master of horror himself, Wes Craven. The film is about a 13-year-old black boy nicknamed Fool, played by Brandon Quinton Adams from The Sandlot and The Mighty Ducks, who lives in a run-down apartment complex in an even more run-down neighborhood, whose mother is sick and whose older sister is busy raising kids. Not only that, but the evil landlords, the Robisons, known only as man and woman in the credits, and played with creepy plastic perfection by Everett McGill and Wendy Robbie, who had previously played a married couple in the cult David Lynch TV show Twin Peaks, are forcing his family out with nowhere else to go due to some late rent fees. And the fact that the landlords want all the tenants out of their shitty properties that they purposely don't put money into. And they got their fingers in the real estate. Started making a lot of money taking over people's homes. The more money they got, the greedier they got. The greedier they got, the crazier they got. To create condos and have clean people living in them. We build a nice, neat condominium, we get clean people in there. A racist dog whistle that gets more explicit later in the film. So, with no one else to turn to, Full gets offered a job robbing the landlords from his sister's criminal friend, Leroy, played by an enigmatic Ving Reigns. Now, this is the big one, and somebody deserved to be robbed. Somebody who don't care nothing about families or about the neighborhood. He just want to bring the wrecking ball in so he can lie in his pockets. Who are you talking about? The landlord, that's it. Though, however, when they finally break in, they discover they're locked in the house where everything is booby-trapped and inescapable, so now they have to run for their lives as the landlords return and start stalking them with intent to kill. Things get more complicated when Full discovers a young girl named Alice, played by A.G. Linger, introduced as a Robison's daughter, who is being tortured and abused by her would-be parents. Remember not to bruise her face. Bad girls burn in hell. And the landlords are keeping people locked up underneath the house, the titular people under the stairs, we find out were former children the Robinsons abducted, like Alice, and who were then abused, mutilated, and sent to be locked up for misbehaving, including the helpful Roach, played by It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia's Sean Whalen, who got his tongue cut out for back-talking, and then found a way to escape in the walls, and is now being constantly pursued. He doesn't talk much, does he? His tongue's cut out. Finally, it then becomes a race against time as Full has to now escape the house while also finding a way to save Alice, save the people under the stairs. Listen, there's a way out for you guys. If you can get past the man. Save his family and save his neighborhood. And the Robinsons aren't going to go out without a fight. Now, like most films on Best Horror Movie You Never Saw, plot is not really the reason to watch the movie, or at least not the main reason. The People Under the Stairs, for instance, contains a lot of thematic power for the way it takes a prescient and hard-hitting look at class disparity and class warfare in this country. In fact, here's Wes Craven saying so himself in a contemporaneous interview with Fangoria, stating, The People Under the Stairs is a raw film with no dreams in it whatsoever. It's an extraordinary real situation involving an awful family that shouldn't exist but unfortunately often does. And on a 2015 Blu-ray commentary track released by Scream Factory, Craven refers to the Robinson's house as representing the whole society of the United States. This includes things like mass incarceration, for instance, the U.S. has the highest prison population in the entire world, trapping women into roles of servitude and obedience to the status quo. Um, what happens to the people when you make them leave their homes? I don't believe I was speaking to you. Speak when spoken to, that's what good girls do and using racism and prejudice to keep marginalized people out. There's no community here. All I see are a couple of... To suffer in squalor or hoarding inherited or unfairly gained wealth. No wonder there's no money in the kiddo. Basically, this film is an obvious, if over-the-top and absurd, satire of Reaganite conservatism that was pervasive throughout the culture at the time the film was made. This includes things such as the hairdo actor Everett McGill Sports being a spitting image of Ronald Reagan's overly slick and gelled mane, as well as giving a woman, played by Wendy Robbie, Nancy Reagan's famous nickname, Mother. Mommy! 
It even tackles the issues of gentrification that have deep roots in racism and classism. Fine print in the lease says you gotta pay triple else get out. Well, your mom and Ruby ain't got triple. Well, don't the landlord know that, that mama's sick or Ruby got babies? Yeah, sure, he knows. He don't care. He wants to tear down the building. You're all the last family in it. The film also doesn't shy away from showing how the police will not help the marginalized and underclass, such as the scene where a fool calls the police on the Robesons, and the film reveals the police have more incentive to protect the well-being of the wealthy elite and, more importantly, their property, rather than the livelihood of the aforementioned marginalized and underclass, which is constantly horrifyingly being seen in the news lately. Essentially, the Robesons are shielded from prosecution because of their wealth, privilege, and the cooperation of the police state. It's as if we're the prisoners and the criminals roam free. I don't know what you mean. I advise you to stay inside, keep your doors locked for a while. So the only way to actually defeat them is when everyone gains class solidarity. What are you gonna do? Furthermore, those who don't work together get killed and they selfishly look out only for themselves, such as Ring Rames as Leroy getting killed after refusing to let Full hide safely in the closet with him. No room. Find your own. So thus, it's only when the marginalized and put upon come together to help each other out, the way Roach risked his life to save Fool, or Fool risking his life to save Alice, or even the entire community risking their lives to band together and protest. Basically, in the end, the working class has to stand together in solidarity, away from the mechanisms of the oppressive state to accomplish anything. In the words of civil rights activist Audre Lorde, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house, meaning, as Craven's film points out, the apparatus of the state, the legal hoarding of wealth and property, and the cooperation of the police will not save communities from corruption and greed of the parasitic capitalistic economic system. Let them roll through your fingers. I've done it myself a thousand times. And I'll do it again. And that they must band together to blow up and change the violent status quo as they successfully do at the end of the film. Now, Wes Craven himself has talked about the issues of capitalistic greed and consumption of modern America before. In one biting interview, he stated, You always feel that anything can happen at any time. But that's true for all of us. Look what happened to the American middle class. They had pensions up the wazoo that just vanished. The way humans deal with the horrific is to put it in a narrative and cloak it in character. In fact, Craven never shied away from the politics of his work, stating in an earlier interview that, The basis of most of my films is essentially true life. The kind of peak pictures that I've made are very much my reading of the current psychological social situation that I perceived in the world, to a kind of B-movie genre format, but making it as deep as I could. And in another later interview, he elaborated by saying, I think of horror movies as the disturbed dreams of a society. But even besides the thematic power of the film, it can't be understated how fun it is, despite its sometimes gruesome subject matter. As Everett McGill and Wendy Robbie are a blast as the bizarro Reagan villains of the film, camping it up but never losing their sense of danger or edge. And Brandon Quentin Adams gives a great performance as the lead, as he shows off the innocence, the resourcefulness, and ultimately the heroic maturity of the character of Fool, as well as never missing a beat on any part of his arc's journey. Honestly, the whole cast is great, which helps sell the tricky satirical tone the film sets out to maintain. Now, while the film was a box office success, making $30 million on a $6 million budget, as well as getting mixed to positive reviews, it didn't seem to have the same cultural staying power as some of Craven's other films, such as Nightmare on Elm Street or Scream. At the time, the general consensus for those who dismissed it in 1991 had to do with the jarring tonal shifts between the nominally comedic tone and children's perspective contrasting of the more gruesome blood and gore later in the film, with critic Roger Ebert even saying that he wasn't a fan of films with cannibals under the basement, and how it should be called Funeral Home Alone due to Fool's clever antics against the two villains. Meanwhile, if you're looking for a fun horror comedy that actually has something meaningful to say about our world, and give Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs a shot. You can currently stream the film on Shudder as well as most streaming platforms, as well as buy it on DVD or Blu-ray. Anyway, thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Horror Videos channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all your support. And if you have any suggestions for films you'd like to see us cover in the future, please leave them in the comments below.
that kid has so many tricks up his sleeve as he outsmarts those adults that they ought to call this movie Funeral Home Alone.